flogging you, who are beating you up, who are driving nails through your hands, what would you have done? If you were God and then you came as a man because you love these creatures, because you love them so much that you heal them, you taught them and you love them, but then they just insulted you. They just spat in your face. They whipped you. They beat you up. They insulted you. They tortured you and dared you to prove yourself as God. What would you have done? You know, honestly, I don't think I could have reacted like Jesus Christ. I don't think I could have controlled my anger, my pride, my sense of justice, fairness. I don't think I could have controlled myself. I think what would have happened is a combination of Superman and Thanos with the Infinity Stone, right? I would have showed them who's the boss. I would have showed them who and what God was really like. Well, why didn't God retaliate? Why didn't God just prove himself by just coming down from the cross? Because of his passion for you and for me. You know, even before creating us, even before creating this universe, God knew he already knew that if he created man in his image, not robots, but creatures in his own image, who can love, who has the free will to love, that there will be free will not to love. In fact, God knew that humans would reject him, that they would be full of themselves and become utterly sinful, that everyone would be separated from him and headed towards hell, to eternal separation from him. The creatures that he created in his own image would all be separated. God knew that the only way to save and to reestablish this relationship would be for him to be physically born and by dying on the cross. He knew all this before he even created anything, yet he created us. He went ahead and you know what? I'm going to die for them. Let there be light. Let there be earth. Let there be humans. You know, now that I'm a husband and a wife, I think I have a glimpse of what this passion must have been like. You know, before having Daniel, I knew if I had a child, that child would suffer. I knew that because this world is that kind of a place. I knew that he would be sinful, that he would be committing sin. I knew he would be suffering. I knew I had to sacrifice for him. Instead of doing what I wanted to do, I had to do what he wanted to do. Instead of spending time and money on me, I have to spend my time and money on, on him. I knew all the sacrifice was needed, yet I had him. Well, my wife had him. Teacher Jung too. You know, there's a kid coming. He knows this is not a perfect world. And he knows that he cannot live as he has always lived. That his entirety of his life is going to change. It's going to be devoted to this child. And all of your parents are the same. Your parents' life before you were born and after you were born were totally different. Yet, they chose to have you. And you know what? Every one of your parents including me, including Teacher Gio, would die for you, would die for our kids. 
even though it means torture, it, even if it means being flogged, even if it means being crucified on the cross, we would gladly suffer because we would know that this suffering that I'm, I'm doing now, that my kid wouldn't have to suffer this. And in a funny way, in that moment of excruciating pain, I will be filled with joy because I know that my son doesn't have to experience this because I'm doing it for him. I would be fearful because of pain. Of course, who wants to be tortured? But the gladness that I'd be saving him from this would fill me simultaneously with joy. And that's what we call passion. The reason why Jesus did not save himself was, was already stated in the ridicule itself. He said, what? He saved others. He cannot save himself. Jesus could not save himself because saving himself would mean not being able to save you. If Jesus called out millions of angels and proved himself, he, wouldn't, he would have gotten the recognition that he deserved. Oh, you must be God. But then that will be end of human history as we know it. Because he would lose every one of us. Because he wouldn't be able to pay the price. You know, as Christians, as people who are Christ-like, we must also have this passion of Christ. Passion to love and save sinners who are just like us. When we see people, instead of pointing fingers, look at those guys, look at those sinners. We should have compassion. Wow, they don't have the love of God. How desperate they must be. How lonely they must be. How desperate they must be without God. To feel sympathy for those who are living without God in their life. And we must demonstrate God's passion, God's love through our compassion. We need to have compassion on those who are going down to the eternity of hell. You know, when I look around, when I look within, I discover that many Christians do not have this passion of Christ. You know, if someone says or does something with, with just a remote hint that they are not respecting us, that they're dishing us, we would already be up at arms and ready to to retaliate. When we feel that we've been wronged, we are too busy demanding justice for ourselves. Hey, I want justice. I want that person to pay for their, their, what they've done to me. When someone has hurt us or caused us pain, we won't rest until we get them back. You know, we have passion. I have passion. For my honor, the respect. I have passion for my pride, 자존심. But a lot of us don't have passion of Christ. And it's not just us. Look at the church history. History of the church reveals the same thing. People who identified themselves as Christians were too filled with passion to convert people. Passion to prove that their religion is right. Passion to impose their will and way on other people that they became legalistic hypocrites. People on a mission of God, for God, but in their way, according to their will. People who, instead of humbling themselves, elevate themselves as if they were like the moral police of society. People who instead of becoming friends of sinners, became enemies of sinners. People who acted as prosecutor, the judge, and the juror to pass judgment on the sinners. People who used the name of God 
No, abuse the name of God to feed their own egos, their pride, to achieve their will and purpose. As we, as we close, let me ask all of you. Shiu, what is your passion? Bora, what is your passion? Jimmy and Daniel, Hannah, Rebecca, Shiu, what is your passion? When you sit here, what excites you? What gets you up in the morning? What gives you the reason to live? What do you look forward to? What is the thing in your heart that pushes you to go beyond your limits? To persevere through being wronged without retaliating, endure name-calling and ridiculing without fighting back, to make sacrifices of your time, effort, money, and resources. You know, when Jesus came to earth, he wasn't on a vacation. No. He was on a mission. That's why when Jesus fulfilled everything on the cross, the last words he said is what? It is finished. I have fulfilled my passion. I have saved. The thing that I came to do, it is finished. I pray that all of us will remember that we too are on a mission. We are not on vacation. Our life is not here. We shouldn't be filled with passion to succeed, to have fun, to be comfortable, to be envied, to be worldly satisfied. That's not why we are here. We are here on a mission. Let us not forget who we are, that we are Christians, are you a Christian? Yes. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? We are Christians. We are people who love Christ. We are people who desire and, and want to become more like Christ. We are people who are reborn into the image of God. We are God-like. We want to be God-like. We must remember that what kept Jesus on that cross was his passion, the power of love, and not nails. It wasn't the nails that kept him on the cross. It was his passion for us. Even if he had to suffer, he wanted to save us. Let us desire to have this passion of Christ. Let us be on a mission to love God, love others, and to save others. Problem with too many youth these days is that they no longer have passion. They are passionless. They just live day to day. No, they just waste day by day. No, they die day by day without the passion to do anything. Don't you want to feel alive? What's your passion? To live each day with that passion is dying. I pray that all of us would find our passion. That there be something we look forward to, something we need to achieve, something that's going to push us beyond our limits. Something worth dying for. Something worth suffering for. Something worth enduring and persevering for. On this Easter week, I pray that all of us will think about our passion. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are made in your image, Lord. 
the Almighty God. Yet, some of us are without passion, Lord. We're passionless. We don't even know why we live day by day. We don't really care. We just want the day to be over. We dredge through the day. We're unhappy. We're full of complaints. I pray that you would help us to focus, Lord. I pray that we would look at you and adopt your passion, Lord. I pray that we would be filled with your passion, Lord, the passion of Christ to love, to save, to sacrifice, to live a worthy life so that every day we'll be living, Lord, full of passion. We would get up and we would be excited, Lord, to live another day that we would fulfill a part of our mission today while we live. I pray for every one of the youth, Lord. This youth, this vibrant life would come fully alive with the passion that you would fill them with, Lord. That they would not waste day by day. I pray that this week we will be reminded of your passion to suffer and die for our sin so you could save us, Lord, from eternal damnation, eternal separation from you, Lord. That, that we could have this loving relationship, Lord, that we could call you Abba, Father. I pray that we would spend this entire week with you in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our words, and in our action, Lord. We thank you so much for everything that you provided, Lord, our daily needs, and abundantly you're filling us every single day, Lord. Not only just the bread, but things that you know we like, that you are tamp pampering us, Lord. You are giving us your compassion to the fullest. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you, us, thank you for keeping us healthy, Lord. And I pray that we would remember you and walk with you every single day. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, so before we break out into our small group, a couple of announcements. We will be having a thing called a Jerusalem run or Jerusalem dance. So it's like a dances. Uh, we will have more uh, announcements 